So in the last video I was talking about this keyboard, the MIDI Plus AKM320 USB MIDI keyboard controller. Again, this is a keyboard that I bought for my daughter. It was only about $35. It was the cheapest MIDI keyboard controller that I could find. Um, and I wanted one. I didn't care whether it has a synthesizer or not. There's no synthesizer or samples built into this keyboard. Everything's done in software. Uh, if I didn't mention in the last video, there's only two uh, inputs on the keyboard, actually an output. We got a MIDI port here sorry, a USB port uh, that used for connecting to the computer, and then we have sustains, because you can buy a sustain pedal, uh, so you can control how long notes sustain. You can also control that in software, which is basically what's happening, you're pressing that and it's telling it in software anyway. Um, but it's convenient to have a nice pedal, so you can get a pedal for like $10, $15, plug it right in there and have a little more control. This keyboard is pressure sensitive, but it's pretty much all the way on or all the way off. I found if I just press the button lightly, it detects it, but I can see it being pressed on the screen, but it's not hard enough. And if I press any harder, it comes in full volume. So although it's pressure sensitive, it's, it's kind enough. Um, but in the last video, we set the volume control here to link to the volume in LMMS. Um, but I want to set it up so that my daughter, who is three, is able to use this. Once LMMS is open, she can click on the icon to open that, and everything she needs to do uh, is done on the keyboard here, which is basically controlling the volume. She can play with the pitch, but I also want her to be able to select different instruments, which is what we're going to use this modulation wheel here for, which is usually used for the modulation of a synthesizer you may be using, but we're going to link it to the instrument input, that's basically the patch input, to choose a different instrument. And I have a sound font file set up with 128 different instruments, and she'll be able to choose a different instrument by sliding this wheel up and down. So starting with LMMS uh, in its pretty much default state here, I'm going to right click our master volume here, say connect to controller. I want to make sure the MIDI keyboard's already connected to the computer before starting this. And now I can slide my volume uh, slide there and press OK. And now as I slide on the physical keyboard, you can see it controlling the volume in software. Uh, next, let's add in some instruments. I previously did a video on um, sound font files and some ones you can install from your repositories. I already have one set up, so I'm going to drag over here. I'm going to drag in my sound fonts right here. And if I click that, you can see the controller for that there. I'm going to right, or not right click, I'm going to left click this little controller here, input, go to input. And I'm going to choose a little off screen here, but AKM320 or whatever your MIDI input device is. Now I can start pressing the keys on the keyboard. So that's great. So we have volume control. And we have our instrument playing. But now I want, again, for the modulation wheel to control the instrument. So here we have the instrument settings, the sound font file here, and I can either choose this little uh, wrench icon here and it brings up all my different instruments that I can choose from. As you can see, there's 128 of them from 0 to 127, and I can choose one from there. But again, I don't want my daughter to have to do that. I mean, she's three. She, she's pretty good with the computer, but... Uh, to click on that and choose different instrument each time might be a little difficult for her. You can also click on the patch here and scroll the mouse up and down to choose a different instrument. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to link the modulation key to that. So all I have to do, just like any other input, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go down to connect to controller. And here are our controller settings. And all I have to do is start moving the modulation wheel because we can see here is check to auto detect. As soon as I start doing that, it has detected that uh, input. I can press OK. And now, as I scroll that modulation wheel, you can see that number moving from 127 down to 0 and back up depending on where, the, which way I'm rolling the wheel. So she can just slowly move this wheel. It's hard to sp sp uh, specifically select a certain instrument because it goes pretty fast. It's very sensitive. But for her, she's just going to be moving this wheel and selecting different instruments. So as I scroll that wheel up and down, and play on the keyboard. I can get different instruments. So now that you have LMMS set up how you like, I can just click Project, Save As, and I can save it to my desktop under whatever name I want. 
And now, when I close LMMS, as long as I have LMMS, or as long as I have my MIDI keyboard hooked up before I start LMMS to make sure it detects the keyboard properly, I can double click on the icon for that project, and we automatically have it all set up with the volume knob and instruments. So now all my daughter has to do is click that icon and start playing with the keyboard. So now it will be very easy for my daughter to click on an icon, pick up her keyboard, and start playing music. And she can easily change the instrument with the modulation wheel here. And she can change the octaves with the octave key here for other songs. So she can easily change uh, the pitch while she's playing because the pitch wheel is set up by default. So bring the volume up a little bit. And again, she can change the instruments as she's playing. And that's it. So I just wanted to give a quick overview of this device since I bought it. Again, not a great MIDI keyboard, um, but for 35 bucks, it's not too bad. It's actually pretty good for 35 bucks. I recommend if you're taking music seriously to spend a little bit more. Again, I really like my Oxygen MIDI keyboard. The only thing that I would say that can make it better is if it was weighted keys. Um, but if you're just looking for a cheap, simple MIDI input device, uh, MIDI controller device, this uh, MIDI Plus AKM320 is a good choice. I got it on Amazon again for about $35. But most MIDI devices, when hooked up to at least Linux, uh, they're all the same as long as the operating system detects it. Any MIDI input on any software that uses MIDI inputs should be able to detect it. And you should be able to link any part of it to any controller, any controller on the keyboard, any controller on the software. So I hope you found this interesting. If you did, be sure to let me know in the comments below and let me know if you liked it by giving a thumbs up. If you enjoy my videos in general, think about becoming a supporter over at Patreon.com. It's Patreon.com forward slash MetalX1000. If you can't be a financial supporter, think about sharing and subscribing. That helps me out a lot. And as always, I hope that you have a great day. Be sure to visit my website, FilmsByChris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.